Hello, Clifford Marshall teachers. Uh, we hope you're all doing well with this uh, virus and everybody that's in. So what we're trying to do here at the Murphy household is a science project. Now, I went to the grocery store the other day and noticed that there were, they were out of flour, sugar, and yeast, more importantly. So people, I think, were expecting to make what, Amanda? Um, pizza. Pizza's one, but what do, we, what do you use for pizza? Yeast. What do you use the yeast to make? Dough. Dough! So we couldn't make pizza dough. Mommy really wanted pizza. Daddy couldn't make pizza dough because there was no yeast. So that got Daddy to thinking, what did Daddy used to do for a job? I used to be a chef, so I used to cook things, but one thing I never learned to make and what we don't think of making is yeast. So we don't, a lot of us don't know how to make sugar or make flour or make yeast. So I went online, did some research inside the Joy of Cooking cookbook with my girls, and we are so happy. <laughs> and we are going to learn how to make a yeast starter using three ingredients, raisins, Mary, uh, sugar, and Sarah, water. Water. So I sterilized a mason jar by boiling in water for 10 minutes because sanitation is really, really important because we don't want what inside the jar, Amanda? Um, bacteria. Bacteria, which would ruin the yeast. So what we're going to do is pour the raisins inside the jar along with the sugar and the water. We're going to let that ferment for three to four days is what the recipe said. And hopefully we'll have a yeast starter and we can make raisin bread pizza. Hey. Not sure if that sounds good, but it's worth a shot in terms of science. So here it goes. Uh, Sarah, would you like to pour the raisins in? Yeah. And what we have to do, don't dump the metal part, just dump the raisins right in the bottom. Good, we get all the raisins, all right. Mary, go ahead with the sugar. Pour it right on top, of just course, dump it right in there. Of course, the sugar. Sugar, yeah. and then uh, Amanda, if you could fill the jar, it said three quarters of the way up. So pour slowly the first bottle, and I'm gonna see where that goes. Pour it right in there, it's, yep, there we go. Slowly, because this one bottle might be enough. Now, does that, what do you girls think? That's about three quarters, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's good. We don't need the second bottle. Okay. All right, so all we have to do is put the, the lid on lightly because we do want a little bit of evaporation to take place. Plus, what's going to happen is, I think, uh, is this is going to create bubbles. So we have to give it a little stir and get everything mixed in. There's a big chunk of sugar in there, so... Hopefully. Yeah, there's two. So what we have to do is we have to stir it once a day for the next three to four days. And it said when it starts, when you start to see bubbles, when you start to see bubbles, and when, especially when the raisins start to float, that creates carbonation. And hopefully the yeast has been fermented from the skins of the raisins. So hopefully we'll do a video check-in for the next three to four days, or maybe longer if we need to. Um, but when the raisins float on the top, it should be done. All right? Yeah. Any yeah. other scientific questions? No. We're going to keep this at... Why do the raisins? Keep, keep this at... Why do the raisins? I'm glad. <laughs> Quick question. Why do the raisins? Because fruit has a natural yeast on the skin. So we could have used maybe an apple or something or peaches yeah. or maybe even blueberries. But the spe yeah. this specific... Uh, I think the reason why they said raisins is because they're dehydrated and they're slightly dried. So it, it'll help to absorb some of the water and um, re release um, a lot of the yeast that's typically on the skin. So it's mostly um, not a lot of juicy flesh as you would have with like a peach or an apple, but a lot more skin on the hardened raisin. If your hands aren't washed, you should always... We all wash our hands. I know, promise. and you should always wash um, bucket. Yes. And we use bottled water, which is, it said you can use tap water or filter water, but sometimes tap water has a lot of um, chemicals in it that could maybe hinder the yeast. So we use bottled Poland Springs water for this, which is, you know, clean and filtered. Any other scientific questions? No. 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 All right, teachers, we'll see you tomorrow with our first check-in on our raising yeast.